everyone, this is Rebecca from Chemnitz, and this is a recap of my most recent dyeing live stream where I space dyed 200 grams of wool roving and then dip dyed 100 grams of stroll fingering weight yarn in the remaining RIT liquid dyes. This is only the third time I've used the RIT dyes before, and I was really, really excited with the results. But I know some of you had some questions with about how much washing I'm going to need to do for the fiber and the yarn. So rather than waiting until we have the finished dry product, I wanted to start the recap at the washing stage so that way you can see just how many rinses we have to do to get any residual dye out of these containers. I decided to wash our dip dyed yarn first. I'm adding just some clear dip soap to some cool water. I, the, the water here is really, really cold, so I added a little bit of warm water. But here is our yarn, and let's see how much dye comes out. Given that the dye bath almost completely cleared, I am very optimistic that this will not require a ton of washing. You can see that some color is rinsing out, but this is almost nothing compared to some of the rinses that I have experienced with RIT dyes. Now, it still might take multiple rinses for the water to run clear, but I am very confident that we will have this intensely colored yarn in the end. Without adding in some warm water right now, the it gets a little too cool to handle. Yeah, so we're still seeing a lot of color leak out. I don't think I left the yarn in the pot very long, so I'm not sure how long is really necessary for the colors to bind. That is one concern that I had while I was dyeing this yarn, but uh, I cannot get over these colors. Uh, I'm gonna squeeze out as much as I can. Okay, I'll keep, keep on rinsing like this, and I will come back and give you an update on how long it is taking for the water to clear. After two complete rinses off camera, the water is now just the very, very barest of blues. Um, it almost, almost is completely clear. So I think two more rinses and then I'm going to hang up this yarn to dry. And I'm doing these last two rinses just to be completely thorough. I think that it would be okay to stop at this point. But I'm hoping to see if I can get everything I can out. With our roving, I'm not adding any soap to the first rinse bath. Just adding the roving straight to it. You can see that there is some color in the pan this time, which is not a surprise given that we dip dyed the last yarn in the leftover dye. Yeah, and so I should be careful not to dye my hands, but you can see that even just pushing the fiber once, we have a lot of color coming out. But again, this is not a surprise. Uh, because, you know, given the, the depth of color that we saw in our in the, the yarn created with the runoff, um, yeah, it's going to take a fair number, it'll take more rinses, I think, to get the dye out of the yarn, or sorry, out of the roving that it did with the yarn. But I think my strategy is going to be to attempt to minimize agitation as much as I can. But also, I want to fill the rinse bath really full each time. Try to dilute 
the residual dye as much as possible. And even, I mean, I know I just said I didn't want to agitate it very much, but you can see that, well, am I dyeing my hands? No, there's not, I'm not even dyeing my hands right now. Uh, <laughs> but you see I'm rinsing the pan to try to get this done as easily as possible. Now the color that is on my hands comes from when I was dying with Lucas this evening. But aha! Oh no, there's still the dark color coming out over there. Alright, but I am I think gonna start to add that's a lot, but just the clear the clear dip soap. And what I like to do with roving sometimes is to let it soak for a while. Because of the bubbles right now, you can't even necessarily see. But just some slow and careful press and release. You can see that the dye is coming out. But at some point, you're not going to get any more dye to come out if like the concentration of dye is the same in the yarn as it is in the rinse bath. So, if the color was paler, I would let it sit for a bit. Now I know this is when I'm in a bit of danger of felting it some, but I'm trying to stay optimistic. The areas with the most rinsing are the teal section and the purple section. But I've lost count of how many rinses we've done so far. But already the color is a lot, lot paler. So I'm actually going to let the, the roving sit in this for um, a little while before I continue the rinses. Just After that last soak, I just added a bunch more water. I you know, dipped it out and added some more water. And check it out. We are at a very, very low level of dye leaking now. So I'm again gonna let this sit for a while in the, in the, I'm blinking. I'm gonna let this sit in the water for a little while to allow this thing, you know, dye to come out. And then I think I'll rinse it two more, two or three more times and we should be pretty good. I'm planning on spinning this myself. And so I know that this level of color coming out will not dye my hands as I'm spinning. I mean, I'm submerging my hands in the dye bath. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna remove as much of the water from the roving as I can and hang it up to dry. You can see that there is still a little, little hint of color in here, but I am gonna let the fiber dry and then maybe rinse the yarn some more after I've spun it. Here is the finished dried fiber that we dyed with the liquid red dyes. They both still have a lot of color left in them. And I'm really, really excited, especially about the stroll finger ingredient, which I think is sort of a, either a deep teal or almost a marine blue. But it's really awesome that we were able to dip dye into the Rick dyes to get a cool gradient of color, especially since the package or one of the instructions I read initially said that you should steam the Rick yarns for 40 minutes to get the dye to set. But this, this yarn obviously didn't take that long, and so I think it's pretty awesome. And now it is time for us to unravel this roving so we can see what our gradient looks like. And I hope, there we go. <laughs> then I started from the right end. But we've got, oh, I'll pull apart the two pieces of roving in, in a minute. All 
it. Let me rearrange this so we can see a bit better. So here is the roving unwound and the 200 grams of roving are still in their two strands with their two strands together. So I'm now gonna separate them so that way we can see what the two colorways look like side by side and see how similar they are. I think that one of the coolest things about the this colorway is that the colors almost seem to be in a gradient. We have the navy, then a teal, then kind of this purple session, and then this grayish session kind of at the end. And so, I mean, it makes a bit of sense, but the colors really kind of stayed mostly to one portion of the braid, and that's kind of cool. It's a little hard to tell from the way I've laid them out, because they're not laid out in an identical um, way right now, but there are a lot of similarities between these colorways, and this is something that I was only able to achieve because I braided with the two strands of roving together at the same time. If I had crocheted two separate braids and put them in the pot, we would have had colors that were coordinating but not identical. And so, with an exception of hand painting, this is a way to get more roving in the same pattern if you want to get more yardage from your spinning project. I don't really know exactly how I'm planning to spin this roving yet, but I could try to spin really thin singles from 100 grams on one bobbin and then do 100 grams on the other, or I could decide to divide it up in some other kind of way. Um, there, there's a lot of possibilities, but I'm really excited to have two color waves that are really, really similar from some low immersion dyeing. I also just want to say that the roving does need a tiny bit of fluffing, but it is not felted. It just, you know, you can fluff it out, and I know that I will be able to spin and draft from this really, really easily. And I didn't even really talk about the colors. I am so excited that we have these pastel sections and then these really, really deep saturated sections. I love the way that colors mix together as you spin, and I know that this is going to add a lot of depth and dimension to the colors in whatever yarn I spin. Thank you so much for joining me for this recap of the live stream where we dyed some roving and yarn with liquid writ dyes. We dyed the roving, two strands that were braided into a crochet chain together, and then in the leftover dye, we dip dyed some stroll fingering yarn, and we got some really amazing colors that I think will be a lot of fun to play with. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and don't forget to subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and happy dyeing! Bye!